here. I'm Rachel Carroll with the Carroll Home Team at EXP Realty. And in this video today, I really want to talk to you all about the 10 things I think that you should be considering before you make the move to Florida. If you find this content helpful, please, please show your love. Be sure to click the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications for any new videos that drop on our channel, and make sure you hit the like button so we know to give you some more information just like this in the future. So let's hop right into it. The first thing that I think people should be considering before they move to Florida, to a city in Florida, is visiting cities in Florida. I know a lot of the people that we see that move here from out of town have actually visited uh, our specific area before and they fell in love with it at some point in time. So I would really recommend if you have the time to be selective, visit some of the cities along the coast if that's where you want to be but um, along the area that you feel would best fit your needs visit some of those cities because there's going to be more prominent cities things like you know west palm beach coco beach florida tampa but there's also some really wonderful little cities all hidden in between things like Vero beach sebastian where we're at now Palm Bay, um, there's some lovely places uh, like Palm City, a little south of us. So if you have the ability to take the time and take a drive or go have lunch or have an overnight stay in some of these other maybe lesser known areas and see if they might be the best fit for you. So that's my first recommendation. My second recommendation would be to research the weather research the weather here. So Florida is a pretty long state. In the north part of Florida, you get um, a little bit more mild weather than you do in the southern part of the state. Now don't get me wrong, in the summertime, it's hot everywhere. It, the whole state of Florida is very warm, hot, you would even say um, pretty accurately. But winter time is going to make quite a difference or even the in between the fall and the spring seasons, you are going to see a difference between North Florida and South Florida and how those seasons are experienced. And my biggest recommendation actually would be think about what you prefer. So we have a lot of people who transplant themselves from let's say like the Northeast or some other colder climates and they're running away from the cold. They don't want to deal with it anymore. So they end up down here in warm, sunny Florida. But on the other hand, we do see some people who've been here for a while or who have moved down. They thought they liked the heat, but actually it's very irritating to them. They're very uncomfortable in those warmer parts of the year and they find themselves moving away to a more temperate climate. So I would really recommend doing some of the research on the weather on maximum temperatures and average temperatures at different times of the year for when you plan to be here. I know we do have a large population of what we call snowbirds, people who um, have a home elsewhere, so they only spend part of the year here in Florida. That's also a nice option if that is afforded to you. But I would definitely research the weather and make sure it's going to be a situation that you like, that's optimal for you, and that you're comfortable with. Okay, so my third recommendation is going to be think about what kind of lifestyle activities you enjoy. So do you like being outside? Do you prefer to be inside? Do you want to be able to sit out on your porch or your lanai throughout the year? Do you enjoy being near the water? Do you like to spend a lot of time walking on the beach? Do you prefer being out on your boat on a regular basis? Do you like to partic participate in lifestyle sports like pickleball, tennis, golfing, those types of things, kayaking? What kind of lifestyle activities do you enjoy? That's going to be absolutely key to focusing in on the area that you wanna be. Um, 
the city that you want to live in, is Florida even a good fit for that? So one of the nice things about Florida is year round, even in the dead of winter, you can be outside enjoying yourself, not freezing. So um, I would definitely consider what are the lifestyle activities that you enjoy to do and would be living, would living in Florida be conducive to those things? Um, obviously, if you really love to be in the snow, sipping hot cocoa and skiing all throughout the winter, this place would not fit. So think about that. That would That's one huge consideration you should not skip over. So my fourth recommendation is really seriously considering what is your budget? What is your budget for the cost of living that you're going to incur by living in Florida? What can you afford comfortably um, without putting yourself into a situation that is less than ideal? Um, does your budget account for the type of home that you want to live in? Does your budget account for the HOA fees that are come along with a a condo type of lifestyle if that's what you're looking for. Um, I know that when my grandmother moved down here, um, she kind of chased my mom down and then I chased them down and that's how I got to Florida. But I know when she first moved down here, she had to be very cognizant about the purchase price of the home, original purchase price of the home, and any fees that she would incur going forward because she was on a fixed income. A lot of people that we do see who are eventually settling down here um, are retirees, so they also are on a fixed income. And if that's you, I want you to be very conscious of what is the best budget for you and then what is that going to afford you in the area that you're looking here. So that's one thing that I really want you to consider strongly. The fifth thing that I want you to consider is, are there any um, amenities or um, services that you have to be near? It is a necessity, like a doctor or a specialist, a hospital. Do you need to be close to um, the highway, like the interstate? Or do you travel a lot? Um, do you need to be near an airport? So those types of things are going to be really crucial to identifying what is the best area for you to ultimately relocate to. So think about that as well because some cities are going to have a lot more options than other cities. All right, so number six, the sixth thing that I want you to consider is employment. So if you are not retired or retiring and moving here to settle, you're probably going to need to continue working, right? That's really the alternative. So do, do the cities that you're looking at offer the employment that you're seeking? That is a huge, huge thing that you need to consider if you are relocating, right? That's gonna ultimately dictate where you end up settling at. Um, I know that Palm Bay, just north of us, where I'm actually sitting now, we do service the Palm Bay area, but I know Palm Bay is one of the largest, fastest growing cities in the whole United States right now, thanks to the SpaceX program and other things that are going on in that industry. Um, however, that might be what you're getting into. That also might not be a place that you actually want to live. Maybe there's another area, maybe you're in the medical field, there's another area that you can look that has a nice hospital setting or whatever your spe specialization is. I'm getting off on a tangent here. But anyways, considering what type of employment opportunities are available to you in the area. That's my sixth recommendation. So my seventh recommendation is, are you expecting visitors, right? So you wanna be able, this kind of goes back to your budget. Um, are you planning on hosting family members? Florida is known as a vacation spot. When I was growing up, we came down and visited my family who lived in Florida 
all the time, every single year, multiple times a year, right? So are you looking for a situation where your family is gonna come down and visit and stay? Do you need to host people? Do you need to have space in a home that where you can host people? Or do you need to be in an area that has a lot of different hotel amenity options that they can stay? So think about that because you you want to, if, if that's your fancy, you want to make sure it's a viable situation for you to host visitors. Now, on the flip side of that, if you don't want any visitors, which is perfectly fine, I understand that as well, uh, then maybe you don't need to worry about this at all. So just skip step seven. Moving on to my recommendation number eight is considering traffic and seasonal fluctuations. All right, so most of Florida experiences seasonal fluctuations where we have um, part-time residents. Again, kind of what everybody in Florida refers to as snowbirds, right? They live part of the year elsewhere and then they live part of the year here. Typically what we see is our season for that starts around November and ends around early May or so, right? So during those months, almost the majority of the state of Florida um, experiences a population spike from the influx of those people who are seasonal owners who are coming down to enjoy the beautiful, phenomenal weather in Florida during those seasonal or winter months. So with that being said, I think it's really important that you consider how much traffic can you put up with? Obviously, you're going to experience traffic in some of the bigger cities like West Palm Beach, Miami, Boca, um, uh, where else? Coco, Tampa, uh, Cape Coral, those more popular, well-known places. Um, you will really not experience any kind of significant traffic in smaller areas like Vero Beach, where I'm sitting today, Sebastian, um, Palm Bay, Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie, eh. Um, they're, they're growing as well, but Port St. Lucie also, you're not gonna uh, experience any significant traffic there, but you will, experience the seasonal fluctuation. So think about that too as well. I hear some people gripe about it, just complaining just like they would about like weather or a bad hair day, but consider it because it is a phenomenon that does happen here in the state of Florida. So moving on to number nine, we're almost there. Um, number nine, my recommendation is to think about any allergies that you may have and any bug aversions that you may have. <laughs> like we're not inundated with bugs here, but we do have bugs. We have no seums that are those little gnats that are so annoying. Um, we do have mosquitoes, especially in the warmer summer months. Uh, we do have palmetto bugs, those big cockroach looking things. As long as you get them sprayed, they don't show up. Sprayed for, they don't show up. But there are bugs here. I would consider that as well. If you're maybe moving from an area where you don't have that, that could be something that would be annoying to you. So think about that. Obviously, there are so many people who live down here in Florida who put up with it and deal with it, and we have ways to mitigate the annoyances of those things, so that shouldn't scare you off, but it is something that I would think about if I was moving to Florida. As far as allergies go, I think it's really important that you consider, do you have any common allergies or any known allergies like to things like certain plants, certain blooms, um, certain grasses, things like that, um, could be big irritants. So consider that as well. It's not a big thing, but it is a recommendation that I would have. All right, lastly, we made it to a recommendation number 10, my final and last recommendation for if you are considering moving to the state of Florida, or more specifically, I'm speaking to my area here in the space and treasure coast of Florida. 
you want to make sure that you get connected by whatever means possible to a trusted real estate professional. Somebody who is open and honest with you, who has a great track record of success, who has a presence somewhere that you can physically see, not just by, oh yeah, I'm great, all my clients love me. Do they have reviews online? Do they have a a record of successful past sales? Are they putting helpful content out to be really a resource in real estate? Do you see them as an advisor and somebody who has your very best interest at heart and can service your needs the very best? So if you have found somebody like that, cling to them for a dear life. Okay, because they are going to be the person who takes you by the hand and helps you identify what you need, whether it's in their area or somewhere else. They're going to have these conversations about everything that I talked to you about and more, and they're going to help steer you in the right direction to find the right fit for you and your family, wherever that may be, Florida or otherwise. They should have your needs at heart first. So find yourself a true trusted real estate professional who can give you the advice that you need about the neighborhoods, the market value, what's going on with interest rates, what new construction is going on in your area that might impact the value of your home or your lifestyle, right? Can they speak to the different kind of construction that we have down here because we have some frame homes and we have concrete block homes and why should you care? And what are the latest hurricane codes that you should know about to keep your family safe? And all of that stuff compounds and is going to help you make the best informed, empowered decision about where you want to live. So those are my 10 recommendations. I wear a mouthful, but I really, really hope that they are helpful and instrumental in aiding you in making the best decision for yourself. If you are looking in the Space and Treasure Coast, please do not be shy. Reach out to us. Me and my team of phenomenal agents would love to be of service to you and your family in your search. And we would love to act as advisors here on behalf of our area in the Space and Treasure Coast. And please, please, again, if you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell, you know what to do. Um, if you have any other questions, leave me a comment below and I would be so happy to answer um, any questions that you have. All right, thanks again. This is Rachel Carroll with the Carroll Home Team at EXP Realty and I will catch you next time. This is Rachel Carroll with the Carroll Home Team here in the Space and Treasure Coast of Florida. If you like this content and you want more, click the videos to my left.